Thank you to those joining us here for our first quarterfinal match here at the Charlotte Open. Andrew Jessup, the number four seed, looking for back-to-back -back open wins. First opponent here, it's going to be DJ West playing Green Red Ponza. So we start out Andrew on Serum Visions. Important to note, it's off his basic island. Basic island, good against Blood Moon. Bad against Stone Rain, good against Blood Moon. And he'll be on the play here. For the Green Red Ponza deck, most of the deck's curve is at four or higher mana. On the early turns, you're expecting eight ramp spells and really just mana denial. Mm -hmm. On DJ's side, turn one Utopia Sprawl on Basic Forest. He'll pass back. Has that turn one Man Accelerant. And because of that high mana curve, the Man Accelerant is just the most important turn. Honestly, if Jessup just had a Stubborn Denial in his opener, there's a strong argument for just leaving that up because countering the Sprawl can be so important. Yeah, it's basically a time walk if Andrew can do it. It can be multiple time walks. Andrew passes, plays Bloodstained Mire. In a pinch here, he could fetch out that basic swamp if DJ has the turn two Blood Moon. Yeah, though it would take something a little more robust to beat a turn two Stone Rain. Second Utopia Sprawl for DJ going on the same forest. It's naming green, so now that taps for green, green, red, plus a wooded foothills. No Stone Rain, no Blood Moons. Looks like DJ's yeah. setting up to cast fours and fives this game. Now, with so many of these auras on one land, is there any risk that Andrew can attack the land and set him back too many turns? Uh, that's not really what Andrew signed up to do. This deck's very land light. Uh, you're not going to see any ghost quarters here. Yeah, you're right. So DJ will untap with, I believe, up to five next turn. Andrew gets his second basic here. These basics are good against Blood and Moon, but one of the elements of the Death Shadow deck is, of course, the namesake card, Death Shadow. Jessup's life total is still very high. It's going to be a while before he can cast one. Yeah, I'm looking at the mid-range threats in DJ's deck, most of them falling at four mana. His five is Stormbreath Dragon, and the six is Inferno Titan. In particular, I was looking for the card Chameleon Colossus in his list, which DJ actually hasn't registered this weekend. Yeah, the protection from black can be very relevant against all of the threats in Jessup's deck. You have Delve Threats, Death Shadow, those are all checked, and Snapcaster Mage is nowhere near large enough to tango with uh, Chameleon Colossus. On Andrew's side, you see an Opt. He's going to go ahead and Shock for Watergrave, and then cast Thoughtseize. We'll get our first look over at the Ponza deck. Five cards in the hand, certainly not going to take Obstinate Bailoff. <laughs> the option, other options are Thrun the Last Troll and Inferno Titan. It's quite the decision. Inferno Titan is two turns away here from DJ, and it's a pretty difficult card to deal with. At the same time, if he lets him cast the Thrun, I don't know that Andrew can get it off the board. The Inferno Titan does a lot of incidental damage, just entering the battlefield, dealing three. Every time it attacks, it gets that 3-3 three, three hit. The thing about Thrun is, yes, it can regenerate. Yes, you can't target it. But Jessup's deck is flush with creatures that are larger than Thrun. Yeah, Tassiger 4-5, Grimog Angler 5-5, five, five. Mm -hmm. Death Shadow, well, probably bigger than 4-4. Four, four. Right. Kind of the big thing is that Inferno Titan can't come online next turn. Thrawn sure. can. If Jessup has another Thought Seize or a Snapcaster Mage next turn, he'll be able to get the Inferno Titan now before it can come down. And that just might be the plan. Andrew took the copy of Thrun with the Thought Seize there, leaving Inferno Titan. Of course, Obstinate Bailoth, that ability, if you, his opponent causes you to discard it, you instead put it onto the battlefield. <laughs> so Andrew can't really take that one. Nope. Also noteworthy that because Jessup has started on basic lands, his life total is still pretty high. He kind of wants to take a little bit of damage. I don't know if we're talking Inferno Titan levels of damage, <laughs> but uh, a hit or two yeah. on his life total is kind of what he's interested he's got in. That, got that terminate. Might let his opponent cast the Titan, take three, then terminate it. One time when they were both standard legal, I saw an Inferno Titan eat two dismembers. <laughs> that was something. <laughs> oh, that's... I think it's took 11. Four mana from DJ is going to make Obstinate Bailoff. So he'll go up to 23. This is a one of in the main for DJ. He'll play a forest, and it looks like an Arbor Elf. And this is pretty nice with that forest with double Utopia Sprawls if DJ gets to untap. Yeah, though he's kind of at the threshold of the most mana he can realistically spend. The one thing this kind of pushes him into is activating Monstrous on the Stormbreath Dragon. That was exactly what I was looking at, saying, hey, is there anything he can do for eight, nine mana? No copies of in Bonfire of the Damned. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see that. That's something I keep coming back to with this list. When you have all this mana, Bonfire can really be devastating, but no copies. 
We'll pass back to Andrew. Some updates from other parts of our bracket. Storm, piloted by Paul Muller, takes game one over Peter Tubergen's Affinity deck. On the other side, though, Joshua Smith's Affinity deck takes game one over Todd Stevens. Yep. Kind of falling the way we expected to so far. The fast decks are <laughs> so far taking the games quickly. The deck that wins faster wins and does it fast. So maybe that means we're still on game one in Merfolk versus Storm. Ooh. Perhaps. Some curse <laughs> if the catchers. the game's still going, I don't know how that feels for the Storm deck. <laughs> Could just be a long Storm turn, you know? <laughs> Make, yeah, Show he's, me. He's playing it out. <laughs> Land four here from Andrew. It is Bloodstained Mire, giving him access to red. Andrew's a little heavy on lands. You can see another shock land in hand. Yeah, you're not really trying to get too many lands on the battlefield in this matchup. Well, there we go. Game one actually goes over to Storm. Just took took a couple more turns yeah. to get the grape shot. Just shots. had to wrap up that storm that storm trigger, let that resolve. And yeah, Michael Conroe taking the first game over Alan Cummings. So swing here from DJ West and obstinate Bayloth. It's gonna be for four. Notably, no attack from Arbor Elf. Really suggests to Andrew the DJ's drawn another threat. Yeah. Alternatively, you know, sometimes you don't see a creature attack into a potential Snapcaster Mage, so I don't imagine that that is the plan here. DJ can tap one land to make Tireless Tracker. Now plays Wooded Foothills. Here's a clue. It's a fetch land. Could get another. Yeah, here's something you can do with Arbor Elf yeah, mana. Like Crack that. those clues. That's nice. Now, DJ's going to go for this fetch, goes to 22. Now, yeah, Andrew's going to stop him here. One clue is enough. <laughs> I would like to fatal push your tireless tracker, please. The fetch land is, should still be in the graveyard. Yeah. DJ's just not searching yet. Yeah, we see some weird, slightly incorrect resolutions of fetch lands. It happens. Yeah, so that's there. DJ has a, a search on the stack. We saw this actually a lot in standard with evolving wilds and tireless tracker. It is an important one to kill. Andrew's going to fetch, suggesting maybe a revolt on Fatal Push here. Yep. Land entering tapped, getting punched by the opposite in Bailoth. That's a knife li enough life loss for him. So Andrew, I like that Andrew has answers here, but you see as he Fatal Pushes the Tireless Tracker, this game is kind of going that route I described where it's turning into a mid-range fight. Mm -hmm. The more this happens, you know, if DJ just makes clues, cracks clues, makes Inferno Titan, I don't know how long Grixis Death Shadow can keep up with him. I'll tell you this much. Jessup's going to need to get more than zero creatures on the battlefield right. if he's going to win this game. You know, I mean, it's a Grixis deck, so it can take the Snapcaster control plan, but it's not completely set up to just win with Snapcaster mages, you know, desolate lighthouses, and an inevitability. It, it does mm -hmm. have to turn the corner. Yeah, you don't have much in the way of clean answers to creatures of this size. And here is Inferno Titan. Thanks to that Arbor Elf, DJ has the mana to cast it on the same turn. Taps out for it. But Andrew, his counter spell is Stubborn Denial, so can't actually counter Inferno Titan, and he'll drop to seven. A little curious that Jessup found Watery Grave there. In order to get an untapped red source, he'll need to shock off of another land if he wants to cast one of these two main deck Terminates. Uh, I don't know if he's drawn them. You gotta figure he'd be reaching for those more quickly against that Inferno Titan. Death Shadow cast by Andrew Jessup. It is a 6 6 currently. And we the backup match here, we have a quick storm. It's a 2 0 victory for Michael Conroe. He defeats Alan Cummings' Merfolk deck and moves on to the semifinals in nine minutes. Yeah, green decks are pretty easy for Storm. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, they're playing a lot of islands. How dare you call them a green deck? Oh, yeah. Though now they are a green deck. Mostly, in gri name. mostly grizzly bears. Three twos for two. True. Following in the footsteps of cards like Garrick's companion. companion. There you go. I think there's, there's one that doesn't trample two yeah, now, right? Yeah, there's one from Theros block. It's just, I think it's, oh, I'm going to get it wrong. And then <laughs> it's Satessin Forest 3 2. <laughs> it's got two green mana symbols. It was okay with devotion cards and draft. Yep. It didn't even make it in a format where 
People played one mana one ones because they gave you devotion. That's how good that oh, card in was. In draft, you, do, you get your your aspect of Hydra decks, and then yeah. you, you play him, and then you giant growth stuff. There were a small number of aspect of Hydra standard decks. He was an attack with Inferno Titan and Obstinate Bailoff by DJ West, and this is actually pretty interesting as to where he wants to send the three Inferno Titan damage. If he sends them up at Andrew, well then the Death Shadow grows. And he can't actually fire breathe his way out of this one. Yeah. So he puts the three damage on Death Shadow. So the 6-6 six, six Shadow with three damage on it's going to block the Titan. And, you know, I really like this card, how this one drop is trading with a six. That's... <laughs> it is a curious play yeah. because if you go upstairs with the Inferno Titan and Jessup doesn't have an answer for the ba obstinate Bailoth, this would be a lethal turn. Yeah, well, he could actually still trade, right? Those both Utopia Sprawls are set to red. So I guess he could have put Andrew to four, and then if a block, he could have used all his mana. Yes, yes. You have red off yeah. the ground, red off one sprawl, untap with Arbor Elf, that's yeah. a third red. Yeah, I guess one sprawl's red and one sprawl's green, so you just have to pump all his mana into it. And then I guess Andrew would crack a fetch land, and yeah. then he'd lose the fight, so okay, right. fair, it's not good at all. Yeah, if second sprawl is on red, that'd be different. Then you have two more red mana. Andrew would have to go to zero to still have a favorable <laughs> trade. Yeah. So, block looks like it's just going to send... If things go as they are on the board, it's going to be four damage in, and Andrew will drop to three. So Andrew drops to three. Then he now has a 10 10 Death Shadow. And state base effects not checked until right. that resolves. Right, so this is the weird part about Shadow. And DJ says it's dead, and Andrew's informed him, no, it's not. He yeah, needed to do some. Yeah. Well, it, he needed to fire breathe. So it already had three damage on it from the Inferno Titan. And the Inferno Titan's going to deal six more. DJ needed to put a point of fire breathing into it to actually have the Death Shadow die in combat. I got to say, I don't fault DJ for this one. I no, don't this think is he weird. gets into a lot of combats, and certainly not with Death Shadow. This card's very unique. Yeah, I mean, it's an unfortunate misplay, but it's the kind where this is a really strange card. Yeah. Now we get to the phase where we do a lot of pointing at Death Shadow and yelling, and then... <laughs> When the dust settles, we have a 10-10. Now, Andrew is still at three, so we're looking for sources of three damage. I mean, on DJ's side, he could just cast another Inferno Titan where he did draw one. So he plays out the rest of his hand. It's an Arbor Elf and an Obstinate Bailoth. Yeah, now, if Jessup is even going to crack this fetch land, he needs to have something to do about one of these Arbor Elves because he's attacking with all three creatures would then be lethal. Three is not a lot of life to play with. So interestingly, you see there's seven mana in play for DJ. With these Arbor Elves, it could be 13. The 13 matters... If DJ draws Stormbreath Dragon, he can attack with it, leaving up seven to actually have the monstrosity become relevant. Yeah, just a pretty light on cards in hand. He's just going to die with a Stormbreath Dragon out, right? Yeah. We see Death Shadow as a 10-10 as a attacking. Arbor Elf will jump in front of that. A little curious about that chump block. If Jessup has no follow-up, you can threaten Lethal with those Arbor Elves with DJ, if he's at 22, he can take two hits off a of Death Shadow. You mean you put in your attack, you'd put him to I one? I suppose the fetch land off Jessup would have put him at two, so this would be a hit for 11, so it is just two hits. You would need something on top of that. Yeah, DJ's got, looks like, about two draws here. Mm -hmm. Though he has two more Storm Inferno Titans and three Storm Breath Dragons. Those should all work. I believe one of his two Pia and Kiran Nalars should work, too. Primal Command is a one of would be fine. He has enough mana to just cast it and to something else. Yep. We see Tassiger looks like it's going to be the play from Andrew. He's tapping a fair amount of mana for that, leaving Serum Visions, Opt, Fatal Push, Dismember in Graveyard, playing another land. So DJ, first card, can it get it there for him? It looks like it was red. Hopefully not a Blood Moon or a Stone Rain. I think it's a Chandra Torch of Defiance, which is really close. <laughs> yeah. If we had another Arbor Elf, it actually could work. We'll check. It is... No, oh. it's Stone Rain. That's the opposite of a Chandra. Well, it does take care of Andrew's red mana here. Make, make it harder for him to have something like Terminate. Yeah, I mean, if Andrew wants to get another red source, he has to use his fetch land, which opens the window to Chandra Torch of Defiance. It opens it to Pian Kiran Nalar mm -hmm. immediately winning. There is some cost to Andrew reloading. Right. I guess it opens it to Huntmaster of the Fells if Andrew can't cast a spell. <laughs> that would be a weird way for this one to go down. And 
Jessup's just going to go down All to right. two. So, deciding if he ever best. wants to cast a red spell, he has to crack that fetch land there now. most likely. Yeah, he doesn't play a basic mountain. So he's hoping to just have his best defense be an offense if he can win in two attacks. Besides, that's the best plan. It's given DJ a lot of outs, but only real, realistically one turn to find him. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the Death Shadow motto. What do you mean, defense? There is Stubborn Denial in Andrew's hand, so Chandra, I guess, not actually opened as an out. Yeah. Big swing here, 11 and 4 would be for 15. Yeah, DJ really wants that PN Kieran, Storm Breath Dragon. Yeah. Now, does DJ have to... He's going to chump block here. I was wondering whether it mattered whether he did this now or later. He'll go to 18. So, still has seven mana available. PN Kieran is still lethal off the top. All right. One draw step. Blood Does Moon. it hit? Yeah. It's not going to do too much. Activate Tasker in response before you lose that blue mana. There you go, Andrew. I just give him the dismember because he can't pay double black for it. <laughs> so he'd have to pay two life. Yep. And... Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I don't think there's... Fair point. Yeah. Hey, you can have Dismember. If you figure out a way to cast it, we're good. Yeah. You can pay exactly two and lose the game. <laughs> Other options. Opt, Dismember, Seer, and Vision's Fatal Push. That's kind of a funny thing about the yeah. way... Oh, wow. Oh, he got, he got a Jessup free one. He, he snuck opt. one away. He got an opt. He shouldn't, he shouldn't get a card off it. Though See if it matters. Really, we're looking yeah. at the top of DJ's deck. Yeah. That, that's what this game is about. I guess, yeah, this, I mean, it depends what Andrew found. He found a, a fetch land off it, so that's not really going to change the math here. You mean a mountain? Yeah, a mountain. I thought his deck didn't play mountain. Well, that's, <laughs> it plays some mountains, but now it plays it more. It plays a lot. It plays almost exclusively mountains. Just an island, a swamp, and then 15 <laughs> or 16 mountains. All right, swing here. The uh, Death Shadow's 11. The Tassiger is 4. This will put DJ down to 3. Still enough blue to hold up Summer Denial. Yeah, it just has the 1. That'll work. It says go. One more draw Ooh. step for DJ. Maybe not even. Coligan's Command. Inferno oh, Titan. wow. That's going to hit the bin off Coligan's oh, Command. Wow. Jessup gets him. Discard and that up. on your draw step. Oh. That's so good. And it. Andrew Jessup's going to take the first game. No, wait, hold on. If we go back to that Blood Moon or Stone Rain, I guess like DJ could have held one of those, and then the Inferno Titan would win. I mean, I don't know that I, I would make the same play. I wasn't even on my radar that, that Colgon's command could do that. Well, but I, uh, if, if, if giving the opt over the dismember got Jessup to the K command, there's uh, your no. line. There's your play. Well, as it turns out, though, that Colgan's command saves Andrew from the lethal top deck, and one game to zero, he is ahead of DJ West. Wow. <laughs> so we are going to move over to the sideboards. <sighs> Start with DJ side. Three Kitchen Finks, two Ancient Grudge, two Trinosphere, two Anger of the Gods, two Lightning Bolt, two Relic of Progenitus, a second Obstinate Bayloth, and a Shatterstorm. You see the Relic of Progenitus come in a lot against decks with Snapcaster Mage and Delve Creatures. That does make sense. It can be difficult to actually convert it against Thought Scour, but you bring it in anyway. Uh, the other card we're looking at is Kitchen Finks. Uh, it's harder to punch through that. It'll buy him time to start landing things like PN Kieran Nalar, Inferno Titan. It bridges the gap quite a bit better than some of these clunkier land destruction spells. Okay. Now, is there an argument versus going... For, yeah, so like, are you getting rid of all the land destruction spells here, or what are you what are you doing with I guess four stone rain, two mass and moss, four blood moon? It's hard for me to get in the head of somebody that registers stone rain in modern, uh, but I would say for sure the acid moss they're really steep for this matchup, trying to yeah. get off of stuff like that. Um, blood moon is actually quite good in this matchup. It most I'm shaving one or two copies. I do like that one. I gotta say I'm generally not impressed by Thrun. There was a point in modern history where you play a blue deck, your opponent casts Thrun, you're in trouble. Death Shadow, Tastiker, Gurmag Angler, Jessup doesn't care. Yeah. My thought sees it too. When you talk about Thrun matchups, we're not looking at a Grixis Death Shadow. You know, if, if Andrew's playing just Jeskai Control, maybe. But against a deck with so many large threats, I don't really like Thrun. Mm -hmm. On Andrew's side, he has two Nile Spell Bombs, two Young Pyromancer, two Teamer Battle Rage, two Liliana of the Veil, two Collective Brutality, an Engineered Explosives, another Stubborn Denial to make it up to four, and a Coligan's Command. 
So you gotta be mindful of what the creature to spell ratio in DJ's deck is going to be. I want some stubborn denial. Four might be heavy. Um, just to cover Blood Moon, you might have to just play the full four. At least three, I would expect. Um, the rest of the stuff's really dicey. It's all very conditional. I like Liliana the Veil a reasonable amount. Uh, okay. It can catch some of the larger creatures, but it's really embarrassed by P and Kier and Alar. Um, you might go for Young Pyromancer largely because you can always cast it even if there's a Blood Moon. Yeah, and there aren't too many removal spells. And by not too many, I mean there, there aren't removal spells in DJ's deck. Mm -hmm. So Young Pyromancer... You figure you'll, you'll get a lot of value off it. And this is a matchup where I'm reasonably interested in Team or Battle Rage. You get into one of these boards where things get gummed up by PN, Kieran, and Alar, and that, that's a creature that provides a lot of reach, and you want to be able to punch through. Uh, Death Shadow, P Team or Battle Rage is a pretty good line in this matchup. So DJ West will take the play for game two. Now, as we move our way through the top eight, if you haven't had a chance to head on over to our weekly sale, time is almost out here on Sunday evening. We have select graded, scanned, vintage, and legacy singles on sale at the SCG store. That sale will go through tomorrow morning, so you're going to want to make sure to catch that while you can. Also, check in next week when we switch to a new sale over at StarCityGames.com. This is your last chance to buy that Beckett 9 Black Lotus. As soon as, as, soon as you go off the air, Ryan's on it. Snipe it. It has 9.5 centering. So that has to do with the distance from each edge, right? Just like how centered it is on the card? Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of overlap with borders with regard to that grading. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. They're related, maybe even close to the same. <laughs> For game two here, we're going to have DJ West on the play. Because his deck has this one to three jump that he's trying to make, something like Blood Moon can be a lot more threatening here, I would think. Yeah, turn two Blood Moon, really tough. Jessup, unless he naturally draws one, he's not going to have access to both of his basic lands. Yeah, we did see last game Jessup drew the island and then immediately fetched the swamp because he was on the play that he had the turns to do that. Mm -hmm. On the draw, he may have to pick between two colors of mana. Yep. And you're still facing that dilemma where even if you're playing around Blood Moon, then you're executing less on the Death Shadow front of things. You're not dealing as much damage to yourself as you would be by fetch shocking. Is there... A color, so I know that between the black and blue mana, um, one more, one that Andrew can, can reasonably win without, or does he have to have both here? You kind of have to have both. Your blue gives you your cantripping, stubborn denial, and choice situations, but your cards that win the game cost black mana. So I guess in theory then he, he could just win off, if he has the swamp and not the island, he could still play. It's it's weakened a lot. If he, if he doesn't have black mana when a Blood Moon hits, he can't reasonably do much. The most important cards are black, but the volume is low. Yeah, so agreed. You, you just run into a lot of problems. Yeah, theoretically, I, I guess you have to do it with black if you only pick one. Yeah, mostly if I'm off color and I guess the Blood Moon matchup, I generally just lose. That's, okay. that's just what <laughs> happens. Yeah. The deck's not really strong enough on one color mm -hmm. to execute. Now, frequently it's the case where you have a couple turns to top deck the appropriate second basic. But you do have to top deck it. Yeah, I mean, the problem is you have to top deck it and you have no way to find it. It's just you're searching through you know, your 60 cards for a one of. Mm -hmm. Especially if the color you're looking for is the island, you don't have any cantrips to go get it either. You're, you're really just drawing one a turn and hoping it shows yeah. up. It can also be tough when you have the island looking for the swamp because if you cast Serum Visions, you're not leaving up Stubborn Denial, and then they stone rain your island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> That's, that stinks. So you have one of each basic, yeah, and then if he stone rains one, well, that's, that's a treat. DJ on the play. Spell player still contemplating mulligans. DJ's going to keep. When I play this on the side, and I know my opponent's playing a deck like a Blood Moon deck, they keep on seven. I got to look at them and say, try to figure out just how dead am I, you know? You're going to turn two Blood Moon me? The answer is always yes. I mean, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I usually just lose to it. Andrew's going to go ahead and multi six here. On the draw, I guess he has to give a lot of precedence for Stubborn Denial maybe in the opener? Mm -hmm. Stubborn Denial or Thoughtseize. You really got to have one. So Andrew Jessup up a game mentioned he was our Dallas Open champion just two weeks ago. The youngest of the metagame gurus. He's the younger of the Jessup brothers, but going for his 
third open win this year. It'd be his second open win in as many tournaments. Uh, the, both the other ones coming in standard, though he has two runner-up finishes at our modern events, this would be his first modern trophy. Yeah. Back when he was playing in fact, he got both of those runner-up finishes. Yeah, losing to teammates, Pete Ingram and Kevin Jones. Metagame gurus for over a year now have really been at the top of the SCG Tour. In our last Open two weeks ago, we saw three of them in the top eight. Andrew has kept on six, and he'll scry to the top. Game two, starting on DJ West. Fetchland. He has ten one mana mana accelerants. Looks like he's going to have another one this game. It's, it's hard to keep on seven if you don't have one with this deck. Yeah, there's no, there are no two mana cards in the deck. It's turn one. This one would be Birds of Paradise. This is a little bit of tension when it comes to Jessup's sideboarding. Fatal Push is okay, uh, in particular if it's Utopia Sprawl here then you're kind of out of luck, but you want to have some number of Fatal Push, and he does have it, which is excellent for him. Yeah, it'll slow down DJ by a full turn. You know, the Fatal Pushes, he may still, ha I would think, have all of them in, just out of respect for these four drops in David's in DJ's deck. He has tireless trackers, so he almost has to revolt them. There are no two, two mana creatures, but there's a lot of good things to hit at three and four. Right. Yeah, if the opening was on Utopia Sprawl, though, Jessup's yeah. in trouble. Yeah, there's no way for him to to stop the next play outside of, I guess, a Stubborn Denial. He fortunately there was able to get his basic Swamp, and you see him drawing a Polluted Delta here. He will have access to that island as well. Scolding Tarn, the land for a turn, so he has access to another land. Finds but both of his basics, though. It does open him up if he taps out here, however, to Stone Rain. These yeah. basics are, are a resource, especially if a Blood Moon is in DJ's hand. Mm -hmm. The Stone Rain doesn't really matter until it's also combined with Blood Moon. Right. The, yeah, actually, Andrew's deck operates on very low amounts of mana. Right. It looks like he's going for an early Delve Threat as he thought scours himself. Yeah. Early dead re Delve Threat facing against no acceleration is a really great spot for Andrew. Yeah, he thought scours his graveyard up to six cards and then delves them all to make a turn two Gurmag Angler. Yeah, and in this turn, it's at, be at best Stone Rain or Blood Moon. It can't be both which means that Jessup going into the following turn with that other fetch land should have access to blue mana, should have access to some disruption. Yeah, I mean, as long as he has a Stubborn Denial in hand, the Gurmag Angler turns a Stubborn Denial into a hard negate and provides a reasonable clock. This is a good situation for Jessup. Yeah, Jessup still has plenty of life. The Gurmag Angler can attack into any one threat out of West's deck. Yeah, I, I like how Andrew's turn two threat is larger than most of DJ's four mana cards. Gurmag Angler very powerful zombie fish. Arguably the game's most powerful zombie fish. Oh, wow. wow. And DJ's going to miss land drop? That might be all she wrote. He was really hoping that Birds of Paradise to not get fatal pushed. Inquisition of Kozlek. We'll see what he was banking on. We see two Inferno Titans. Two Kitchen Finks, one Tireless Tracker, and one Nissa Voice of Zendikar. So th that tells a story here. We have four three-mana cards in DJ's hand. And to be fair, these are all totally reasonable. The only one that Jessup's probably not looking at is Tireless Tracker. But yeah, he doesn't have the, more lands. Yeah, and you know the three others at least buy time against Grimmag Angler, and then Nissa just kind of fully checks it if it's the only threat. I'd be inclined to go for Nissa here, but one of the Kitchen Finks is also totally reasonable. Yeah, it looks like Andrew will take the Kitchen Finks. If he has another threat, this definitely makes sense. The Nissa's not really a problem that Andrew can't attack down. Right, yeah, if Nissa just has like another threat or even a removal spell to kill the plant token, he can take that one down in one turn. Yeah, when you look at it that way, what, one removal spell kills Nissa, whereas you need two for Kitchen Finks? Yeah, you know what else one removal spell kills? <laughs> this Arbor, Arbor Elf. Elf. Yeah, DJ does not draw the land, he draws the mana creature. Cast is here, that means Andrew has perfect information. He has a choice. You see him eyeing up this Dismember. He doesn't have to cast it just yet. He has Dismember and Teamer Battle Rage in hand. He's very close to making the Gurmag Angler lethal with that Battle Rage. Well, here's what I like. So say next turn Andrew just attacks. DJ goes to eight. 
Then DJ makes some creature. Andrew attacks, DJ blocks, and Andrew says, play Battle Rage and Dismember. Take 10, game. I'm into it. I'm into it. I think that's where Andrew's going, too, is he didn't kill Arbor Elf. Mm -hmm. Here's another reason why you wouldn't take Nyssa. Jessup just has Summer Denial in hand. Yeah, the only way DJ can stop that win on the next turn is by blocking here with Arbor Elf. But if he does that, I don't he know where he's going. Yeah. yeah no this. idea if he'll have a third land if he makes that block. Yeah, I don't think you can reasonably just put – you can't block with Arbor Elf here. That's not – That's your land. You're yeah. Just, you're yeah. blocking you're with your, your third land. Your lands away. In your hand of uncastables. <laughs> DJ drops to eight on the swing. Andrew looking to set up a win on the next tack. Got Teamer Battle Rage and Dismember in hand and Stubborn Denial. Yeah, weighing whether he wants to Dismember now. Doing a little bit of math. Yeah. Even with the Kitchen Finks, it only puts DJ to 10. Dismember or, Stubborn, or Teamer Battle Rage, that's still lethal. Looks like he had Snapcaster Mage plus Inquisition of Kozlek as a possible play, but no, nah, he'll just stay as is. DJ going to go up to 10 on Kitchen Finks. Or no, uh, the Kitchen Finks will persist first, so I guess he'll be at 12. So he does have okay, to mess so around not, with this a little bit more. Yeah, it's not a win immediately. Still a great spot for Andrew. If he can just swing here, if DJ doesn't block, DJ will lose. Mm -hmm. Got to figure that he would block. End step. Well, hey, here's two more points yeah. of damage. End step Snapcaster Mage just casting it, flashing back nothing. Yeah, that actually makes it lethal. That's a, a plus good, two. Yeah. Good play there by Jessup. This should be the last turn. Swings with both. DJ going to block the Gurmag Angler, and here we see the play. It's going to be a crack of a fetch land. We believe Teamer Battle Rage on Angler and Dismember on Kitchen Finks. Should be good enough for a win. Mm -hmm. And he's moving like he sees it. This is the yeah, line. Yeah, he's got it. And there's Dismember on Kitchen Finks. Yeah, right. Dismember on Kitchen Finks. So they die, they die, persist back, but they're not blocking. Mm -hmm. So DJ goes to 12, but here's Teamer Battle Rage. It's 10 off the fish and 2 off the Snapcaster Mage. That's going to be the win. And 2-0, Andrew Jessup moves on to the semifinals.